begin to run in. Oh, down to Mississippi. To Steve in Texas? Or oh, I was already talking to Ronnie. Ronnie in Texas. Old Hickory said we could take them by surprise if we didn't fight. And now we're talking to Justin. I need to get a new call list. These all get mixed up. Justin, Steve, Ronnie, Travis, Chris, and others. We're talking to Justin in North Carolina. Okay, uh, Justin, we got interrupted by the break there. Go ahead and make your point. Yeah, Alex, what I was saying was, like, you, you've you got Gerald Salente coming up here in a few minutes, and uh, he's got a, a YouTube video that he just recently did uh, where he said that there would be a revolution in America. Now, he's a trends forecaster. We take our cues from him. He's been pretty accurate in the past, so this is a man who knows what he's talking about. But to wrap it all up into one Well, point, sure, and the establishment has said that that they're setting up a police state knowing what they were going to do would cause a revolution. So, yeah, I mean, Gerald Salente's a smart guy, but he's he's basically saying he's predicting the sun will come up in the morning. Well, yeah. So what I wanted to ask you was, I, I mean, I, I listen to your show, and, and I know your stance, and I know your position. Sure, go ahead and, and ask the question. Well, if push comes to shove, are you, are you willing to lead this group of merry men and, and patriots, or, you know, how's it going to go down? Because a lot of people are taking their cues from you. So I think we've just dug into the trenches and gotten ready for the idea that sooner or later we're going to have to fight, and we're looking for a leader. So will it be you or will it be someone else? Well, I think the leader is going to be every individual out there, and I appreciate your call. You know, I'll... There's different types of people in this world. And there's a type I see a lot who always plan for what's going to come instead of dealing what's happening now. Now, I deal with the past, I deal with the present, I deal with the future. And so I don't know what the globalists are going to do. I don't know what ace is up their sleeve. I know what group of aces are up their sleeve. I don't know which card they're going to play. So I try to prepare people for different eventualities, different scenarios that can unfold. And a lot of people I talk to say, I'm just buying guns and food and ammo for 10 years. I'm not going to go to city council or county commissioners or the state house or talk radio or access TV or the gun shows. I'm not going to warn anybody. I'm not going to go speak up at my church. I'm not going to get involved. I'm just going to wait for war to start. And then I'm going to go out and basically blast police and military. Or I'm going to shoot whoever comes to my house to get my guns. They're just going to turn the food and water off for six months and let your neighbors burn you out if they go to that scenario. I mean, in a situation of warfare, 90% of it is propaganda. They call it info war. Black propaganda, which is lies. White propaganda, that's truth. We use white propaganda. Their favorite is black propaganda or kind of a gray propaganda that's a twisting of it. That's what makes our information so much stronger. It's historical. It's factual. It's based on reality. They lie and get caught lying. We tell the truth and get verified over time so our credibility goes up and up and up, even if our delivery sometimes is pretty haphazard and obnoxious. It's real. And people resonate with that. And we got guts, and guts is enough. But if I tried to make myself a leader, and if I tried to say I'm your president or I'm your colonial leader, number one, it would look ridiculous to the general public, because it would be. And uh, number two, it would make me a major target and then would weaken the whole movement because it would be a unified, vertically integrated, top-down power structure. That's why having too many eggs in the Ron Paul basket. I've said support him. He's a great focal point, but they can demonize him. They can marginalize him, and he'll get old. It's got to be about the information. And Ron Paul has said that over and over and over again. Anytime you try to compliment him, he explains, no, no, it's the idea. I'm just a focus of this, one of the focuses. So because of the nature of our society... And what's going on in it? Now is the critical time to speak out. Now is the critical time to be involved. Now is the time to be reaching out to people in any and every way we can. Because as the police state cracks down, as the restrictions on free speech cracks down, it's going to be harder and harder. Why are they cracking down on freedom of assembly and freedom of the press and all this? Because it's hurting them. They don't like it because they're vulnerable. 
So instead of just wearing camo and wearing black bandanas and hiding out in the woods and having people salute you as the captain and militias struggling over the power structure. And, you know, I watched the uh, Republic of Texas and not all of them. There were four or five different factions, but mainly it was people in trailers being saluted by their nephews and nieces. And they had admirals with with pontoon boats. And if you owned a firearm, you were a general and they would wear military outfits and, 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 and looking like clowns. And I know a lot of them must have been feds. I saw their interactions with police. They were meant down the road, the globalists saw Texas sovereignty or secession as a threat. It was meant to archetype it as a clown. And this is what they do. And so instead of talking about who the leader is and talking about the organizations we're going to build and having committees and meetings and you know, there's so many groups that just have committee meetings and groups and they make you honorary members and they call you and say, do you want to make decisions? Do you want to be an I'm too busy manning the guns in the info war and trying to wake up as many people as I can to do as many radio interviews as I can do as many news articles, as many films. And I'm just here trying to say, wake up the next person, discredit the system, expose false flag terror, expose the globalist. Um. Uh, so somebody asked me, are you going to lead us? I am already leading. There's a reason I'm leading people. There's a reason I'm the most hardcore, the most effective, the most focused. And that doesn't mean I'm doing a perfect job. It's because I will put the hours in. I will do the job. I will do the radio shows. I will make the films. I will write the books. I will interview the guests. I will take action. And then my listeners are taking action and their leaders. And so... I believe at a county and city and state and regional level, there are leaders out there. And they're going to be state representatives and they're going to be congressmen and women. And uh, th they are there. And many governors have risen. Like Elliot Spitzer was going to expose the banks and he had one skeleton in his closet and they blew him away. And uh, this other governor was starting to fight the New World Order. He'd actually been to Bilderberg. But he had rejected them, according to what he said, and thinks they were a bunch of old clowns. They didn't like that, by the way. I'm not saying he's perfect, but, you know, he had some skeletons cheating on his wife, and they're, they're destroying him. And Palin isn't perfect and has got her own problems, but they're going to destroy her because she's calling for state sovereignty. And Democrats, like Spitzer, they're, they destroyed him. Uh, and uh, Blagojevich, as bad as he was... They destroyed him because he kicked Bank of America out. There was a great article written over the weekend at InfoWars.com by one of our op-ed writers, one of volunteer writers. You can write your own stories, and if they're good, we'll post them. Writers at InfoWars.com. And it was a great article about how they're going after governors. Something like anti-New World Order governors beware or something. I forget the exact headline. Maybe we can put that up on screen for people. But uh, when somebody says, are you going to lead us? It's easy from your house to have 10 or 15 sycophants show up and call you the master and commander or the captain or the, or the leader or the provincial leader or the uh, Continental Congress secretary or... What do they call Oliver Cromwell? What was, what was his name? Uh, oh, I gotta know that. Wikipedia Oliver Cromwell. It was, uh, oh, it's, it's like a splinter in my mind, not being able to remember. Here, I'll look it up. Oliver Cromwell, and then we'll go back to calls. Oliver Cromwell. What was his term? What was his name? You know, Wikipedia has been exposed as a CIA front for a reason. It's always the first thing that comes up, and it's riddled with disinfo. But see, I already have historical background knowledge, so I'll, this is just to refresh my memory. I'll know if this is accurate or not. What was his... T no, his name was not Ironsides. It was... Uh, no, it was like Grand Protector, Defender of the Faith. Oh, this is driving me absolutely crazy. Yeah, 
no, it's it, it's not Ironsides. So, exactly. That's why Wikipedia is an absolute joke if it says that. Okay, uh, let's just go ahead and go back to calls. I'm not going to sit there and obsess over all that. Um, let's talk to. Let's talk to Steve in Texas. Steve, you're on the air. Yeah, hey, uh, good afternoon, Alex. Uh, first of all, Cromwell's title was Lord Protector and Defender of the Faith. That's it, Lord Protector. 